Tokyo is a safe and peaceful city. At least, that's what the populace believes. The DA, a secret organization of highly trained orphan girls, Licorice, simply erases any threats, making the city's problems disappear, maintaining its manicured image. A fellow agent is taken hostage during an arms deal. Disobeying orders, Licorice Takina opens fire, ending the stalemate. Having botched the mission, she's dismissed from the DA's headquarters and transferred to a branch operating out of Cafe Licoreco. Apparently, there were no guns at the scene. Mika, the branch leader, finds out later. Hanging up the phone, the DA's commander reveals that Takina is merely the fall guy after a hacker going by Walnut on the dark web infiltrated their system. Mistaking Mizuki, a former DA member working at the cafe, for her new partner, Takina is surprised at how different Chizato is from the other agents. Despite being a top-tier licorice, she's supposedly a bit of a problem child. After completing their rounds for the day, Takina asks what Chizato's branch actually does. She simply says their job is to protect people. They receive a bodyguard job for a stalker case. When they meet the victim, they realize she unwittingly posted a photo of the arms deal, the real one, three hours before the licorice agents arrived. Walking her home, Takina is left alone with the client, letting her get kidnapped, firing live rounds into the van, only to be chewed out when her new partner returns. They're being watched. Takina takes out the drone following them, while Chizato uses non-lethal rounds to subdue the kidnappers, even saving one Takina shot. Like she said, their branch protects people, regardless of whose side they may be on. Walnut discusses the arms deal and the DA with the man from the mysterious Allen Institute, conceding that the hacker knows their stuff. He hangs up the call, detonating a bomb, presumably killing them. The same man walks into Cafe Licoreco the next day, recognized by the owner, Mika. Walnut discovers he's been sold out after his dummy apartment is destroyed. Right from the horse's mouth, another hacker named Robota and contacts the Licoreco branch. The Allen Institute finds impoverished geniuses and assists them with whatever they may need, without cost. The man from the Institute, Mr. Yoshi, is a regular at the cafe. Walnut hires Chizato and Takina to protect him from assassins and intercepts them heading to the meeting place. Wearing a squirrel costume, claiming to be Walnut, they enter the car which is remotely taken over by Robota. They notice the drone following behind and manage to take it out, stopping the car right before driving into the river. After ditching the car, they're surrounded by armed men in an abandoned supermarket, although Walnut appears to be more concerned with his luggage than his own life. Chizato tells them to go ahead without her while she patches up one of the injured mercenaries, warning her they're walking into a trap. But it's too late. Walnut steps out the back door getting gunned down by multiple assailants. Robota reports the success to Mr. Yoshi, while the girls get discouraged upon failing their mission. It quickly turns into shock when the squirrel sits up, and then anger when Mizuki takes off the head. It was her the whole time. The suit is bulletproof and filled with fake blood. The real walnut emerges from the yellow suitcase, revealing herself as a young girl, the exact opposite of their expectations. She uses the translation Kurumi when they ask her name. They bring her back to hide out at the cafe and enlist her help finding the arms dealers when Mr. Yoshi enters, inquiring about what Chizato and Mika really do for a living. Takina still hasn't warmed up to the new branch members yet, let alone their clientele. She refuses to join them for board game night, keeping her distance. Overhearing Chizato is due for her physical exam at DA's HQ, she insists on going with her. The other licorice are spreading rumors about Takina trying to kill a fellow agent. Chizato discovers that her and Takina's former partner, Fuki, is taking the exam too. She confronts the commander about Takina's transfer and the newfound evidence. Despite the commander's best efforts to dismiss the accusations, Fuki accidentally mentions the radio interference that caused Takina to take matters into her own hands. She didn't disobey orders after all. At the firing range, she meets her replacement. The DA has no intentions of letting Takina return. They challenge each other to a mock firefight, trying to prove that she's not useless. Chizato consoles her, telling her about the communication error. Despite being a scapegoat, there's nothing she can do but move on. 
hugging Takina only embarrasses her further while other agents continue to gossip. Chizatsu waits, toying with Takina's replacement during their mock firefight. She can easily dodge every round at close range. She disarms her, tossing back her weapon to humiliate her further. When Takina shows up, she sucker punches Fuki as payback before taking her out, winning the training match. The commander explains that Chizato is a genius when it comes to predicting bullet trajectories. Based on sight alone, even at point-blank range, it would be difficult to hit her. Afterwards, Takina decides to join the cafe's game night. Having a newfound respect for her partner, she smiles for the first time. Now open to the idea of using non-lethal force, Takina has a hard time hitting anything with Chizato's bullets. She opts for regular rounds. She'll just graze them. It'll be fine. While playing a VR game, Chizato notices that Takina wears men's boxers. She asked Mika which he preferred. They're quite liberating. She decides it's time to go shopping, as does Kurumi, though black market weapon prices are stagnant, no sign of the missing guns yet. Takina begins enjoying life away from the HQ. She's still curious why Chizato tries to avoid bloodshed and asks her motives. It's simple, she doesn't feel good about it a less altruistic answer than she was expecting. Apparently, 10 years ago, someone from the Allen Institute gave her a pendant. She wants to find and thank them. Takina finally lets go, pretending to be a fish, cheering her up and causing them both to make a scene. Takina laughs for the first time after leaving HQ. Despite seeing Mr. Yoshi frequently, Chizato does not recognize him. The Institute prohibits further contact with those they assist. Mika calls him out for contradicting himself over drinks. Mr. Yoshi responds by asking if he's been able to keep the promise, and that he believes geniuses are gifts from God, even a genius for killing. After their day on the town, the partners notice the area is littered with agents. In the subway, a group of terrorists opens fire on a train as it rolls into the station, only to find a licorice ambush. The leader resorts to blowing them up, burying the agents and barely escaping. He gets a call while checking the news. It's being reported as an accident. Answering, it's Robota, but quickly hangs up after his annoying boasting about being the greatest hacker here to help. Chizato holds a meeting to go over their next job. The client is a terminally ill, wheelchair-ridden executive who's been hiding in the United States after his wife and child were killed. His dying wish is to tour Tokyo so he hired licorice bodyguards, fearing he might still be a target. Meanwhile, the police chief investigates the subway accident, finding a single bullet the cleaners missed and signs of a shooting before being chased out by government agents. After the radio tower attack, these cover-ups are only increasing in number. Above ground, the two inspectors notice Chizato and Takina, whose tour is going off without a hitch. Kurumi discovers Chizato has an artificial heart, asking to see the DA's files on it. Maki tells her it's not their tech when she notices the pendant. Takina tries to confirm her lack of a heartbeat. It's breast not to do that in public. Well, that and an assassin, Silent Jin, is hot on their tail. Mika worked with him 15 years ago. He's the real deal. After taking out Kurumi's drone, he captures Mizuki before she can power on the backup. Takina leaves Chizato with the client. Jin appears behind her almost immediately. It's a good thing Mizuki managed to plant a tracker on him. The client catches on, guessing it's the same man who killed his family. Takina tackles him before he shoots Mr. Matsushita, whose actual request is to watch Jin die. A bit hardcore when it comes to sightseeing. Something's off. He knows Chizato is one of the Allen Institute's investments. It turns out Mr. Matsushita doesn't really exist his voice and wheelchair being controlled remotely by a member of the Institute. The terrorist group baits another licorice. The leader, Majima, hits her with a car before a group of men shoot her unconscious body. The increased attacks on licorice agents prompt Takina to stay with Chizato. Confused when she enters an empty apartment, she explains it's one of her safe houses and shows her the secret entrance to the apartment below. Robota tries to get Majima to target Chizato at the Allen Institute's behest. When he's given three days to find the DA's HQ, he begins panicking. The only one able to hack the DA is Walnut. He discovers the location of Chizato's safe house, 
sending some thugs is only enough to get footage that happens to intrigue Majima, saving his skin for now. Kurumi figures out that the same guns from the arms deal are being used in the terrorist attacks. She also finds leaked photos of the now-dead Licorice and comes clean about hacking the DA. There's another problem. They know what Chizato looks like. Before they can warn her, Majima hits her with a car, noticing the pendant around her neck before she springs to her feet and starts running. She's able to dodge Majima's bullets as they race after her. When he spits blood into her eyes, she's unable to read his movements. Takina makes it just in time to shoot the pistol out of his hand and they jump into a getaway car. There's an even bigger problem. They have an RPG. Kurumi sacrifices her drone, flying it into the wielder's head, causing him to botch the shot, blowing up Majima, who falls into a river and survives. He returns to Robota's apartment, elated. It seems he did find something interesting after all. Now, he just has to dig up more info about the top-tier licorice. Thank you for sticking until the end. Subscribe for more videos like this.